You're watching Chicago Bears Now. I am your host, Harrison Graham. As always, we've got the latest Bears news and rumors to get into, including some stuff on the D.C. search, so stay tuned for that as the Bears need a new defensive coordinator. But we got to kick things off with Deshaun Watson. What else, right? Should the Bears go all in on Watson? How about four smoking Jays on this one? Duh. They should try to do everything they can to get Deshaun Watson to Chicago. Now, here's the latest. Adam Schefter reported, uh, I believe on Sunday, saying there's a growing sense that Watson has played his last snap with the Houston Texans. Obviously, he's kind of thrown out a few cryptic tweets. He has not been in contact with the Texans. He's been upset with their GM search and their coaching search. And he just appears to want out of Houston at this point. Now, for the Bears, they obviously need a quarterback. They're in desperate need of a quarterback. And Ryan Pace said during the press conference that was terrible, by the way, that everything is on the table when it comes to the quarterback position. Well, put your money where your mouth is, Ryan Pace. This is your chance to redeem yourself. This is your opportunity to correct that mistake in 2017. Now, you might call the Texans and offer them four first-round picks, and they might say no. But you got to try. You got to see if you can get Deshaun Watson on board. And by the way, I'm tired of you guys in the comments saying, what part of the salary cap don't you understand? Guys, the Bears can afford to trade for Deshaun Watson. His cap hit number is not that big next year. They can make it happen. We'll talk more about that in just a second. Make it happen, Ryan Pace. I promise you this. If the Bears trade for Deshaun Watson, we're going to be live making a video about it. So hit that big red button and subscribe today. We crossed 20,000 subs in the last week or two. Appreciate it. Type S if you've already subbed. If you haven't, Hit that sub button. Daily Chicago Bears videos for you guys, including the latest news and rumors. Let's get to 21,000 subs as soon as possible. Here's the evidence. If you trade for a team, whether it's the Bears or anyone else, his cap hit next year is only $10.5 million. Guys, I'm well aware that the cap is probably not going to go up this year. I don't think it'll go down. I think the NFL will borrow money from future salary caps to keep it in that 195 to 198 million range. But even if it goes down a little bit, the Bears can maneuver some contracts. Hint, hint, Jimmy Graham. We'll talk about him in a minute to make this work. They can make it happen if they want to, if they can actually pull off a trade. Obviously, if you were to do this, this would be franchise changing. To get a guy like Deshaun Watson, a player of his caliber, who completed over 70% of his throws, almost 5,000 yards and 33 touchdowns in a dysfunctional franchise this year, that would be unbelievable. That would be, like I said, franchise changing to get a top five, top six quarterback and probably the best young quarterback under the age of 26, not named Patrick Mahomes. That's what Deshaun Watson is. He's as close to Mahomes as we got in this league at that age. If you can do it, you got to do it. What's my plan? Simple. Sign AR and try to trade for Watson. It may not work. The Texans might say no. I'll tell you what, though. If you're going to get Watson, you better have Allen Robinson on board because Deshaun Watson has a no trade clause, and which means he could have some power on where he could end up getting traded to. And if Allen Robinson's not in Chicago, that's not going to happen. And yes, they can make the money work. The Bears have some contracts that they can cut or trade. They can make it happen. So should Chicago go all in on Deshaun Watson? Type Y for yes, type N for no. We'll make this the pinned comment on today's video. If I don't see a bunch of Ys, hundreds of Ys in the comments, I'm going to be very, very disappointed. So go ahead and cast your votes right there. Take a look at the Smoking J rumor meter. Uh, maybe uh, you forgot about this or you haven't seen it before. Here's the deal. Four Smoking Jays, which we just did in terms of the Bears going all in on Watson, or at least they should try. That means bear down. You better do it. It's going to happen. Zero Smoking Jays. It's fake news. One Smoking J. That's barely true. Pretty unlikely, though. Two Smoking Jays. People are definitely talking. Could be 50-50 there. And then three Smoking Jays. It's pretty likely. 70-75% chance I could see it happening. So speaking of that and keeping that in mind, how about hiring George Edwards as the defensive coordinator? I'll give this one two smoking jays. People are definitely talking, and the Bears are talking to George Edwards very, very soon. Now, keep I totally forgot about this. George Edwards interviewed for the head coaching job in 2018 when Matt Nagy got the gig. So there's already familiarity there, and this tells me that they at least like him, right? They would not bring him back 
for a, for a defensive coordinator interview if they weren't high on him and if they didn't like him last time around. Obviously, they went with Nagy as the head coach. Edwards has been a defensive assistant with the Cowboys uh, this past season. Obviously, he's been a D.C. for a while, though. He was a defensive coordinator with Washington all the way back in 2003, a couple of years with Buffalo. And I thought he was really good under Mike Zimmer with the Minnesota Vikings. They were always top ten in scoring defense during his time up in Minnesota, which at the end of the day, it's about how many points you give up. I don't care who the Bears hire as D.C. All I want is is for Chicago to get someone in here who's going to be more aggressive than Chuck Pagano. This is an important hire. Again, I don't care who it is, but whoever it is needs to be able to connect with the players and needs to be willing to dial up more blitzes. I thought Pagano got stale in 2019 or in 2020. He saw it a little bit in 2019. Trying to get back to that Vic Fangio status in 2018 is what you're shooting for if you are Chicago. Obviously, if the offense improves, the defense will be better, but I think schematically some slight tinkerings and changes could be important as well. George Edwards, George Edwards is a guy Chicago likes and has liked in the past as well. Now, obviously, the interview process has begun for Chicago. They've requested an interview for Jonathan Gannon, the secondary coach from Indianapolis, young guy under 40 years old. He's been an NFL assistant coach for 14 years, fresh out of college at Louisville. Uh, he's bounced around the league. So I, he, I'm high on him. I think the Colts' defense really surprised some people this year. I think he could be a real up-and-comer. James Betcher is someone they've already interviewed on Monday. He served as the Giants' D.C. Uh, from 2018 to 19, Cardinals' D.C. before that. He wouldn't be as high on my list, especially since he wasn't in football this year. And obviously, if you guys missed it, I did a Chuck Pagano replacements video. Talked about some other candidates as well. We talked about Jay Rogers yesterday. So this is underway. We'll just have to wait and see who the Bears end up hiring. So who do you guys want as the Bears' defensive coordinator? Let me know in the comments. I know there's a lot of Jay Rogers fans and internal hire uh, here on Chicago Bears now. If you want him, maybe you want Wade Phillips. I know Chris Richard has been a name that's been thrown out there. Who do you want to be the Bears' D.C. in 2021? Go ahead and let me know. Now I want you guys to get going with Bet Rivers at chatsports.com slash betil or chatsports.com slash betin. It's championship weekend in the NFL, and there are opportunities to make some money. You can sign up and deposit from anywhere. You'll get the 100% deposit match upon sign up. But to actually place a bet, you must be within state lines of either Indiana or Illinois. Chatsports.com slash betin for Indiana folks. Chatsports.com slash betil for Illinois folks. I've got three bets I really like here on championship weekend. If you can get the Packers at minus three and a half at home against the Bucks, big fan. I loved them at minus seven against the Rams last week. They won that game easily. This game's going to be in the 20s and a really good chance of snow. Tom Brady's played a lot of cold weather games in his career, but statistically, not nearly the same player in the snow, especially as he's gotten older. I love the Packers in that. And I love the under in that game as well. I, both those teams can put up points, but 51's quite a bit for a game that could have some weather concerns. I love the under, and then I love the Chiefs minus three against the Bills if Patrick Mahomes plays. So if you're watching this at a later date and he's been ruled out or whatever, don't take the Chiefs minus three if that's still out there. But if Mahomes is out there and you, think you can get it at minus three, I love Kansas City. So you can make some money on those games. You can do prop bets on each of the games as well. Chatsports.com slash betil. Chatsports.com slash betin. Bet Rivers has been with us all season long. We appreciate their support. Go ahead and support those guys and make some money. Okay, next rumor on today's show. How about cutting Jimmy Graham? I didn't go for smoking Jays, but it's pretty damn close. I'll give it three. I probably really should have gone like three and a half here. This season pretty much played out about as well as we could have hoped, right, when it comes to Jimmy Graham. They gave him that two-year, $16 million contract, $9 million guaranteed, and he had a pretty solid season. Cutting him after year one was always a pretty good possibility, right? His cap hit next year is $10 million. That's simply way too much. That's why it's team-friendly for the second year. They can save $7 million by cutting him. You guys keep saying, oh, they can't afford Deshaun Watson on the cap. If you cut Jimmy Graham, you're only $3 million away just on one player. So you can make things happen. Jimmy Graham was great. I think he was a good leader for Cole Komet. 
when they signed him, if you told me he, you'd get 50 catches and eight touchdowns, wouldn't we all take that? I mean, I think at the end of the day, Jimmy Graham outperformed what any of us thought he would do. I think I said 400 yards and five touchdowns would make me happy. He got 450 and eight touchdowns. That's pretty damn good overall. At the end of the day, once that contract was structured the way it was, I initially said, oh, well, they'll just cut him after one year. And that's still true. It's not like he went out there and had an 850-yard season and was a Pro Bowl player. He's good, but he's not 10 million good. Could you restructure him? Yes, but I think cutting him is probably the likely scenario. That's why I'm going to give it three smoking J's. But great Jimmy Graham season for me. Great last name, A, B, C, D, or F. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. All things considered, got to give him like a B, right? He was solid, man. Really good in the red zone. He's just getting older and he's not worth his contract. That doesn't mean he wasn't good, though. I'll give him a B. Go ahead and grade him for me down in the comments section. All right, last rumor here. How about trading up for the number two overall pick? I'll give this one one smoking J. I won't totally dismiss it, but I wouldn't even say it's 25%, but it's not zero, so I got to give it one smoking J. Uh, this one coming from Fansided. They threw some ideas together, some trade packages Chicago could do to get from the 20th pick all the way up to number two. And the reason I won't completely dismiss it as well is there's reports out there that the Jets are reportedly considering keeping Sam Darnold and that they could shop the number two pick. Now, it's going to cost a fortune for Chicago. Here's what Adam Schefter had to say, then I'll throw a couple of my thoughts out there. I would think that Sam Darnold is going to return as the Jets quarterback and the Jets will entertain offers at the number two pick. Right now, I think the plan would be to proceed with Sam Darnold as the quarterback of the Jets in 2021, which obviously Robert Sala has come out and said, hey, I think there's untapped potential with uh, Sam Darnold. But this kind of feels like the new coach is just saying all the right things. I'm not convinced this would happen. I'll ask you this question. Would you trade three first-round picks for the number two pick? Because that's probably what it's going to cost to get from 20 all the way up to number two. Type one for yes, type two for no. Would you trade three first-round picks to get all the way up to number two? Go ahead and let me know. And the reason I posed that question, this is the trade fan sided throughout there, and I think it's going to cost this and maybe even a little more, honestly. Number two pick goes to Chicago. Jets get number 20 this year, the Bears' third-round pick this year, and their next two firsts in 2022 and 2023. You guys are probably saying, that's crazy. No one would do that. That's what it costs, guys, <laughs> especially in a good quarterback draft class. If the Jets trade down from number two to a team in the teens or later, they're going to get three first-round picks. I'm not doing this trade. I'm not trading three first-round picks to get up to number two. And if I'm Bears ownership, I'm not letting Ryan Pace do it. The only way I'm letting Ryan Pace do a wild trade is if it's for Deshaun Watson because I know what he is. He can be your guy for the next 12 years. I don't know what Justin Fields is. I think Zach Wilson's talented, but I don't know after Trevor Lawrence if I have a legitimate franchise quarterback. I think at the very minimum, Lawrence is going to be a 10 to 12 year solid starter at minimum. These other guys, I don't know. I think Fields has some bust potential. I know Wilson and Lance have bust potential. I think Jones can be a really good pro, but uh, obviously you're not going to take him at number two. So I'm not moving from 20 to 2 for that much because, A, I don't trust Ryan Pace to pick the right guy, and, B, I'd rather try and go in all in on Deshaun Watson. I think it's simple. If Watson is able to get, you try everything you can to get that guy. If it doesn't happen, you reassess. But at that point, I still wouldn't trade three first-round picks to get up to number two. So who will be the Bears' starting quarterback next season? Let me know down in the comments section. Predict it for me. Who will be the Bears' starting quarterback in 2021?